Good morning, gentlemen. Good Happy morning, Shabiba. Good morning. Great, we're going to get underway. We are still expecting Mr. Uh, Mayor Cam Guthrie, but we'll, uh, we'll begin and hopefully he can still join us this morning. I'd like to thank everyone who's joining us on this webinar. Thank you for being here and joining our second virtual town hall meeting with our elected officials. I'm Shakiba Shayani, CEO of the Guelph Chamber of Commerce. And we know that much has changed after the, uh, the last few months, weeks and days, and, and we're happy to be able to ensure our members can stay engaged with our elected officials through these virtual town halls. We've been continuing to advocate on behalf of our members to all levels of government for the tools, the funding, and many other supports that you need during this period. I would like to thank MP Lloyd, MPP Mike, and Mayor Cam Guthrie and their teams for responding to our members' needs and concerns throughout the weeks. We will be giving each elected official a few minutes to address all attendees, let us know uh, what they have going on and an update on programs and supports, and then we'll move into uh, open forum question and A period. So please feel free to um, ask your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. I will moderate those questions. If you do see a question that you like, please upvote it instead of posing it again. Uh, we will ask the questions with um, the most upvotes. And if you'd like to direct your question to a specific speaker, please also feel free to do that. We are recording this webinar today and we'll be posting it to our YouTube page. So uh, look out for that as well. I'd like to just pass the, uh, the mic over to, to MP Lloyd Longfield and, uh, and begin our discussion. So again, good morning and uh, go ahead, Lloyd. Well, thanks, thanks, Shakiba. Uh, it's great to have the Chamber Network uh, at the table as always uh, to listen to the concerns from the business community and from the associations that are members of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we are working on programs, rolling out uh, as we go and also changing as we need to. Um, the ones that are, are currently being rolled out, the wage subsidy program uh, was passed in Parliament over the weekend and uh, the Minister, Minister Morneau has said that he hopes that uh, that will be hitting the ground within three weeks. And so we're still in process to get that in place. Um, we've been working with Mike and with uh, provincial counterparts on industrial rent and commercial rent and with the landlords. And uh, the Prime Minister has signaled quite clearly that we have a program, but that program uh, is really relying on the provinces and territories to also participate. And so we're working through those details in the background and hopefully uh, we ha will have something within the next very short while. We know that May 1st is approaching quickly and rent is approaching quickly. So in terms of helping businesses with their expenses, that's one area that we've been working on. Um, and maybe I'll just, I'll leave it at that, other than also to say that I, I'm sitting on the Standing Committee for Industry, Science and Technology, and uh, we'll be having our virtual meetings starting tomorrow. So that, or I'm sorry, sorry, starting Thursday. Uh, and then we'll be having meetings twice a week. Um, the first meetings will be on small business and on, uh, on business in general. Uh, next week, we'll be looking at uh, food, uh, food related businesses, food processing, uh, agriculture, businesses, uh, farmers. Um, and then going forward, we're going to be going through the different aspects of uh, the economy as it's being hit by COVID-19. So did any of your members have any input they'd like to give me? to make sure that I bring that forward to those meetings. So I put my, my email address in the chat, chat area. Thanks, Lloyd, I appreciate that. Uh, we will send uh, both Lloyd and um, Mike, you've kindly shared your contact information. So we'll make sure that goes into the post event email to registrants so they know exactly how to contact you for that feedback. Right. So, any other updates, Lloyd, before I pass it over to Mike? No, I think we'll leave it at that other than you know, the tragedy in Nova Scotia has been uh, something that we've been reeling over uh, from the weekend and, um, you know, our hearts and, and thoughts definitely go out to the people in Nova Scotia and the people who have family members or friends out that way. It's been a terrible thing in a peaceful part of the country to see what has happened there. Um, but it shows again how we are one community and when one part of us is hurting, we're all hurting. Great comment. Uh, agreed. Thanks, Lloyd. Mike, to you. Yeah, thanks, Shakiba, and thanks everyone for joining us. And I just want to echo uh, Lloyd's comments regarding uh, the situation in Nova Scotia. It's just heartbreaking. And um, 
I mean, what else can you say other than I think we're all hurting for sure. Um, and I just also want to quickly just say what, uh, how inspiring it's been for me to work with Lloyd and Cam. Like, I feel like the three of us work really well together. And I've done a number of interviews over the last few weeks where I say something like, uh, well, I saw this gap in, in the government's response. And I would always say provincially, but I would share it with my MP. And two days later, the federal government would make an announcement addressing the gap. Not that I have any influence over that, but I know you know, you're taking those, uh, those, um, that input. And my input comes from what people are telling me in the community. And I know you're taking that to Ottawa. And likewise, I'm taking that to Queens Park. And Cam has been fantastic. And his role is head of LUMCO right now. I think all three of us are sort of well positioned to work well together in Guelph, but also, um, provincially and nationally in our respective roles as well. And so I think that's worked out really well. Uh, and so like Lloyd, uh, one of my focuses is on what recovery is going to look like, what restarting the economy is going to look like. And um, I'll be sitting on the provincial committee that's going to be working on that. And so by all means, please uh, bring your needs, your ideas, your concerns to the table. Uh, so I can bring those to committee meetings, which will be starting soon, and we'll be uh, meeting virtually as well. I'll have to say that the two issues that businesses in Guelph have raised with me the most are one is the provincial essential business list. And so um, it's very challenging to get uh, clarification from the province uh, beyond what's already written on their website. But if you have a if you're if you have a question uh, regarding that, we are following up directly uh, with the ministry for you. Uh, and I can't always get the answer you want or even the clarity you want, but we try the best we can on that. Uh, and it's really important to be clear because if you are a non-essential business and you open, there are significant penalties. Uh, and I want to make sure no business in Guelph has to go through that. And so we're doing the best we can to get that kind of information to you, but also to relay concerns to the province, uh, just to make sure there's an equitable playing field for all businesses. Uh, so by all means, reach out to my office if you have any questions or need any assistance in that regard. And then the second one is commercial rent. Um, you know, we heard that prior to April 1st, and as Lloyd said, you know, May 1st is just a few days away at this point and uh, we're all hoping that the we're all hoping for an announcement this week and i think the prime minister has indicated that's the case and i know rent's a provincial jurisdiction so i know you know provincially i've been pushing for the province to either come up with its own rent commercial rent relief program or at the very least work cooperatively with the federal government to roll one out so i'm pretty confident that's going to happen uh, but I know it's a concern that, that everyone has. Um, and then uh, just the final point I'll make and then turn it over to Cam or, uh, and open to questions is, um, is, is the, if you look at the numbers that were released yesterday, uh, a lot of the, uh, the uh, virus spread in the community seems to have peaked, um, though people need to be cautious that a peak could be a plateau that lasts as a plateau for a while before it starts going down. But our biggest increase in, in COVID numbers are in congregate care settings, which is just wherever people live together and in particular in long-term care and nursing homes. Uh, but also we're starting to see outbreaks in prisons and other uh, congregate care settings. Um, but because of the what seems to be positive numbers on the community side of things, the province yesterday uh, did start discussions about what what a gradual and careful and uh, uh, you know adhering to uh, public health guidelines around physical distancing, uh, gradual reopening of our economy will look like. So I just want people to know that those conversations have started. Uh, it doesn't mean it's going to happen soon. Uh, but the conversations are, de are definitely are, have started, and I know that's a deep concern to many business owners. And again, any input you have uh, regarding that and how it relates to your particular business, uh, please reach out to my office.
Excellent. Thanks, Mike, for um, laying that out there and, and specifying those two really important uh, points about recovery and rent, really uh, key, key items on folks' minds. So thank you. And I'm sure I'll have some more specific questions for you about both. Um, but I'll pass the mic over to uh, Mayor Cam Guthrie. Thank you. So glad you're able to join us and that we're able to see you this yeah. morning. Um, you know, a few minutes of an update and then we'll uh, we'll continue through uh, Q&A for all three of you. But good morning, Cam. Uh, good morning, Shakiba, and uh, to my colleagues there. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry for the delay again. Let's see. Uh, we have some firewalls here at City Hall that make it difficult sometimes with uh, clicking on links. So my apologies. Um, so I guess from an update from our point of view from the municipality is council did meet last Thursday and we did uh, unanimously approve uh, a lot of new fiscal financial relief uh, measures. Uh, so what we did was we extended uh, the deferral of tax payment uh, to the city if required. Uh, now it's been extended all the way to the end of July, July the 31st. Um, I will say it, uh, I'll stop on those words if required. Um, and that is, is that I've actually received a lot of emails from people saying, you know, I am in a position that I can still pay my property taxes and uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm honored and I'm happy to do that. And so those, those are great conversations, uh, sorry, great messages that I've been receiving um, from those that can pay. Uh, they do go to our, our critical services like water and wastewater and fire and police and ambulance, our frontline, our waste curbside, waste pickup, uh, those, those, and there's many more, but those, those highlight uh, transit drivers as another example. Um, those are critical services that are, are needed uh, to keep things chugging along as best as they can in our city. And so we need cash flow, just like businesses need cash flow. Uh, to be able to pay for the staffing and the overhead costs to provide those services, right? So, but the deferral option now being expanded to July 31st um, does give those that are struggling right now that breathing room and some time to try to get themselves uh, um, in a better position where they might be able to have some, some help. Uh, and so uh, there's no interest fees, no NSF fees, uh, no collections, people calling you, things like that, if people cannot pay uh, their next installment and the next installment was due on and is due sorry on April the 30th uh, that happens to be when the next installment date was so if anyone has any questions on on what I've just said there um, on the property tax side they can go right to our tax department and there's people working there still a, a lot now uh, trying to help with the situation and at the email is really easy tax at guelph.ca um, and especially for those that are on the, um, the pre-authorized payment plans where it just comes out of your bank account, uh, they do require about 10 days notice from us to inform the institution, the banking institution to stop those. So if anybody wants to stop those, needs to stop those um, at this time, please email tax at guelph.ca so our, our staff can help people get through that. Um, that's, that's really, uh, I would say, it for now, other than the other announcement last Thursday night was the uh, public release of the mayor's task force on economic recovery. Of course, my colleagues, both Lloyd and Mike, are, are, are going to be on that. And also you, of course, Shakiba, is going to be on that uh, as a, a great leadership role there. Uh, and uh, we have our first meeting about that tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, and uh, lots of community members that uh, I have requested to be on there will be on there along with uh, three councillors. Uh, Mike Salisbury is going to be on there. Uh, Dominique O'Rourke is going to be on there. And Kathy Downer is going to be on there as well. And I think they'll, they'll focus. I think Kathy will focus more. I've asked her to concentrate more on the cultural and tourism kind of aspect of the economy and getting uh, focused on that. Uh, and then both Mike and uh, Dominique, uh, maybe more around the small to medium sized business uh, focus as well. And so uh, it's gonna be a great group. We're all there to try to help as best as we can as we funnel things back through um, what we can do at the city. And then also to do advocacy work alongside Mike and alongside Lloyd as we go to the upper levels of government. Great, thanks, Cam. That's an excellent update. You touched on some really important points and specifics, and I suspect we'll dig in a little bit deeper as 
well with some of the questions that are coming in. And um, there's some great ones in and uh, questions being upvoted in our Q&A. So thank you to everyone who's participating. We do have about 78 folks on this webinar. So really uh, glad to see such an engaged community. Um, let me jump to the first question um, and directed to Lloyd. Um, and it's, of course, about the significance of um, sole proprietors and, and their struggles. And uh, a great, uh, it was posed very well, so I'm going to read some of that to you, Lloyd. What, if anything, is available as far as financial relief support for sole proprietors? The CERB provides a maximum of $2,000 a month, um, uh, and we're allowed to earn about $1,000 in addition to these funds, but $3,000 a month is simply insufficient for most of us to pay our personal and business uh, overhead costs. So uh, Lloyd, I know you have uh, comments to make to this. Of course, this is a common difficulty for, for many folks in our community where we have a lot of sole proprietors and small businesses. What can you say to this? I had started typing comments in the chat to answer the question. So I started answering that question, but um, I could add uh, CERB right now is the vehicle that we're, we've been using. We have identified sole proprietorships as having some unique challenges. Uh, one area that we are working on that we've already mentioned is the reef for rent relief, looking at what expenses we can help uh, with all businesses, but in particular sole proprietorships um and then tax deferral measure measures and and, and uh, other programs through the banks but uh, sole proprietorships um are something that we're still discussing to see how we can provide more than cerb relief uh, but at this point it is crb the, the person asking the question is right okay thanks uh lloyd and it's a good point. It's still a bit of a, a crack for, for folks um, and a gap, but it is it has been acknowledged by the Prime Minister. And so I know that uh, it's, it's on uh, his radar and the government's radar. Yep. Okay. Um, this next one, um, I'll direct to, to Mike to start. Um, this question pertains to curbside service, Mike. It seems like muddy waters. On one hand, it seems fine as long as it's completed outside of the store in a safe manner. Paragraph five indicates it may only be available to designated essential services. And um, you know, at the last uh, DGBA video chat, it was suggested that that is still fine, but it still feels a bit uncertain. How should people navigate curbside service provision? Yeah, I think Shakiva. So yeah, that issue is one that we've put a lot of work into. And so the second um, iteration of the province's essential non-essential business list makes it pretty clear that curbside pickup is is allowed, and and so uh, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I would recommend you know using good physical distancing techniques. So some of the businesses that I you know uh, purchase things from through curbside. Uh, you know, have used really good practices like staff have had gloves and masks. They've made sure there's proper physical distancing. In some cases, they've even put, um, like if you schedule a time, they've put whatever it is you're picking up out for you. Uh, so there's no interaction, no personal interaction. So they're, so one, it's allowed and two, uh, there, there's good practices. Um, and if you have any questions about, you know, what would be a good, uh, practice for your business, I really encourage you to reach out to public health. Um, uh, the public health website uh, is, has a lot of good information on it. And you can always call public health to get the proper information as well, because you want to make sure you do things appropriately and in ways that uh, comply with public health guidelines. That's great feedback. Thanks, Mike. And we hope to provide um, perhaps a webinar session on specifically how to provide healthy and safe uh, business services during this period. And we hope to have public health on to be able to share some of those details to our members. So that's on our radar as well. Um, a great question um, about uh, hospitality and tourism industry to, to Mike and to Cam. You know, what insight can you share on the recovery plan and any timetables specific to that industry? You know, we know that hotels, restaurants specifically are, are struggling uh, very much um, in our community locally here um, and of course across the province. 
Um, we've gotten really great updates from Tourism Ontario and they're having continued conversations. But wondering if there's any feedback, Mike or Cam, you can provide um, to, to this question about tourism and, and accommodations. Yeah, I like I followed Lloyd's example and started typing a few responses. So I, I started to type on this one, but maybe I'll just focus on answering here. Uh, uh, so I can't I, I can't tell you all the details of the committee that's forming for recovery, but I can guarantee you that the tourism industry is on the list of priority sectors uh, that the province is going to be looking at what what the recovery package should look like. Uh, I can't give you an exact timeline. I know our committee, we're hoping to start meeting uh, before May 12th. May 12th is when Queen's Park will next reconvene, but we're hoping to start some of the committee processes before then because we can meet virtually. Uh, just on a personal note, I have met with um, a lot of the provincial tourism uh, industry leaders and associations, as well as having some meetings with people in Guelph. Uh, and so the idea is that you as individual business owners, as well as your associations are bringing to me, I will bring to the table in terms of those committee discussions. Uh, but unfortunately at this point, I can't give you an exact timeline because I just don't know yet. Fair, fair, thanks Mike. Cam, anything about that? Yeah, um, a few things, I think three off the top of my head. Um, last Thursday, council also unanimously approved um, stopping the rollout of the municipal accommodation tax that we were going to be implementing in Guelph and that would be on all the hotels. I think the question you specifically had that word in there um, and so that's been put on hold indefinitely and so uh, that will come back at some point but we just felt right now is not the right time adding that extra costs onto a hospital, uh, hospital, not hospitals, hotels. Um, and the second thing is, is that, as I mentioned, the mayor's task force will also have a uh, dedicated focus on culture and tourism. And so that that's good. And then the third thing is I have been, I have had a couple of communications from the RTO4, which is the regional transit office for that kind of looks at our area. And, uh, and so they're, they're looking for probably funding from provincial government that would then flow to them and then flow back uh, to the local level. And so obviously um, city staff, myself, will give feedback uh, in regards to the needs of the community that we can bring um, to their table. And uh, those are the three things that I can say on that answer. Okay, thanks, Cam. So more developing and certainly a, a key industry um, that, that's going to require some focused attention as soon as we can get to work on recovery. So. Yeah, and actually, if I could just jump in on one more thing on that. Uh, I think as part of the recovery comes out, I think a lot of people are uh, maybe focused on shovels in the ground, you know, those types of projects that can really help with the economy. But um, the well-being and the morale boosting of tourism and, uh, and things like that, um, culture, so whether it be concerts or you know, community parties or things like that, I mean, th those are going to be just as important, too, to help with the recovery. And so those are the types of things that I, I will be advocating for. Excellent, yes. Having good stimulus projects in mind is going to be key for us uh, as we move forward. Thanks, Cam. So a question um, um, directed to Cam, but um, you know Lloyd and, and Mike, you might have feedback as well. So um, a little bit of narrative here with the Guelph Renters Union preparing for another round of residential rent strike communications and small landlords in the city are lacking clear guidance on how to deal with non-payment of rent or how to approach the situation with the tenants. Is there anything that can be done at a municipal level to provide guidance to landlords or for the city to weigh in on conversations to ease the, ease the tension between landlords and tenants? Provincial statements have biased heavily towards tenant protection and Guelph small landlords feel abandoned and left in the dark. So any feedback about supporting landlords who are trying to support businesses and residents, um, but are also having a difficulty navigating, you know, what it is they should or can or should not be doing. First to Cam and then per perhaps back up the chain. Yeah, so um, I think my answer will be pretty quick only because the Landlord Tenant Act 
Act um, and all that legislation is, is housed with the province. Um, so I, I, I will literally go up the chain to Mike when I'm done here. I think there was a part of that question though that I heard that said, it, could the municipality have a voice in, in, in helping with that? I think really, uh, and I might be echoing what's coming from the province right now from, from government is that they really want to try to have both the tenant and the landlord, whether that be residential or commercial, try to have you know conversations and work things out themselves. That's I think my, mostly the theme I'm hearing um, to collaborate together to try to get through this. Um, I would echo that, uh, and that may. In all situations, and I totally understand that, um, and I have problems that uh, get to pay their overhead too, um, and so I fully acknowledge that. Um, and so I would I would turn it over to Mike right now if you, uh, that's probably the best segue I can give to Mike. Thanks, Cam. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Cam, and yeah, this really rests with the province. So um, anybody who's frustrated, don't don't take your frustrations <laughs> out of <up> there. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I have been pushing for a rent relief package for both temp, like individuals and families and commercial. And the language I've been using is that any re rent relief package benefits tenants and landlords both. And really tenants and landlords are in this together. If tenants have the money to pay their rent, then landlords have the cash flow to pay their bills. And you know whether it's mortgage or property maintenance, waste disposal, building staff, like uh, protective equipment for building staff. So expenses for landlords are going up. Um, so I'm very, very uh, sympathetic to the position that landlords are in. Um, and I know in you know I've I've met with smaller landlords who are in very difficult cash flow situations. I've met with larger landlords who are in less challenging cash flow situations, but if they see big numbers in people unable to pay rent, then they're going to start being in cash flow situations as well. And so I think people need to realize that um, that landlords are as challenged by the rent situation just as much as tenants are. And so I've been trying to communicate that. I know that doesn't solve the problem because the problem is cash flow. And until we've addressed the cash flow situation, that problem is going to remain. So just from what the province has done is on the commercial side of things, there is no legislation around evictions, just so you know. Um, but on the uh, residential side of things, the province has said that the, they will not enforce any evictions. And so, um, so any landlords on the call and, and or tenants on the call need to be aware of that. Um, and, and the bottom line is, is my hope is, is as the federal CERB rolls out and, and you know, EI payments roll out, that people will have cash flow to be able to pay rent. Uh, but in some cases, because people have less money than they would have normally made at work, and they've got to pay food and utility and a whole host of other bills, people could come up short. So I know at the current moment, the province has been asking landlords and tenants to try to work things out. Most of the landlords I've talked to have done that. And in some cases yeah. actually have funds in place uh, to assist uh, tenants who, who are unable to pay their rent. They had those funds in place prior to the crisis. And obviously those funds are gonna be under significant stress in the current situation. Uh, and then on the commercial side, uh, you know, the, the Prime Minister and Lloyd can speak to this has really signaled that uh, we are going to have a rent commercial rent program, hopefully by the end of the week. And, and um, um, but I know that still doesn't address what's happening on the residential side of things. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to continue to push that at the provincial level. And if any stories that landlords have that you can bring to my office, and I put my contact information in the chat box, please do that because that makes it more powerful when we have meetings at the provincial level to tell those stories and to yeah. have some very specific examples. So then it's not abstract. Thanks. If Mike. I can just briefly add to that, what we're looking at from our side is a flow through program uh, because the landlords have the relationships with their tenants. 
um, that we would be moving money for the tenants through the landlords and uh, recognizing that some landlords are also part of REITs and they have to show return on investment. So there's some, some technical challenges that we have that we are working on right now. Uh, we have connected some of the larger Guelph landlords to the finance committee that's also doing a study on this. And by doing a study, it's, it's not going to be months. We know that May 1st is coming. So um, we hope to have something through the federal government, through the landlords, to the tenants, and particularly, you know, the, the sole proprietors that aren't getting access to other programs. Uh, we see that as if we can solve the problems for sole proprietors, we'll solve the problems for other, other tenants as well. And one thing also, one of the landlords said to me, what we don't want is in three months for all the tenants to get up and move because their landlord relationship is broken and to have all these people shuffling through the market that isn't adding anything to the recovery plans that we have. Uh, we want people to be able to stay in the places where they are, to have a good relationship with their landlords and to be able to manage the finances throughout what we're doing. So that's really the goal of what we have is to keep everybody in place, but to make sure that they can afford to do that. Yeah, that's great feedback, Lloyd. You know, we know we want to support a positive outcome um, for both landlords and tenants. And it does really sound like folks are wanting to work together to support each other through this. But of course, whatever support cash flow financial uh, is possible for each side, um, the better. So uh, looking forward to some announcements up and coming. And a quick um, uh, tangent related to, to this a bit to you, Lloyd, about housing. You did answer in our chat, but I thought if you could make a quick comment about affordable uh, housing and the reaching home funding that's been um, increased to our region, if you just want to make a comment about that. Sure, yeah, there's uh, about 700 $20 million that were added to the $158 million that the county had for reaching home. And that is to help with uh, homelessness in our, in our community. But we're also working on um, using that money to solve some longer term problems. Uh, we have about 14 projects that we've identified with Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation and partners in Guelph that we're looking at doing the work to try and move those projects forward. And we're hoping that some of the 720 million is going to help that, but it also has to pay for uh, cleaning hallways and protective equipment and isolating people that normally wouldn't be isolated by putting them into hotel rooms. So the money has some very short term needs, but we're also looking to try and leverage into long term as well. Great, thanks Lloyd. Um, there's a good question here about insurance. So um, is there anything that can be done to be to put pressure on insurers to give businesses a break on commercial insurance premiums? It's one of our biggest monthly expenses. And since we're shut down, it's frustrating that insurance companies are unable to give us a break. Mike, yeah. to you. Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm going to say, you know, in the same way that the province announced um, some regulatory changes to assist drivers, uh, in their with their automobile insurance, um, I reached reaching out to the finance minister to uh, inquire <laughs> about the same thing for for uh, uh, building and home insurance or building insurance for commercial properties as well to see if there's anything that can be done uh, in that regard as well. But uh, at this point, it's 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 in the advocacy stage and the stay tuned stage. Okay, that's fair. Thank you. Um, someone can, I, can I jump in on, oh. on that one? Of, of course, uh, with your experience and <laughs> in insurance, <laughs> please do provide feedback. Yeah, so I'm not I'm not here to give any advice uh, at all, but I but I, I I do know that obviously more in the commercial insurance realm, it's usually handled by brokers or agents, and so uh, make sure you do reach out to your broker or agent and 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 talk to them about the situation that you're in. The, the other thing from back in my insurance days, um, I remember doing some courses on stuff like this. Um, there's actually a lot of stats, and this is terrible to say, but there's actually a lot of statistics that say that even though businesses are closed, um, they can actually be at a greater risk of theft or vandalism or things like that that happen while these places are closed um, because unfortunately thieves know they're closed and there's not you know people there and, and things like that. So um, the, the type of insurance policies that people would have in place would cover probably those exact type of things for still theft or, or fire, vandalism. Um, so talk to your broker or agent 
Um, you could also uh, perhaps ask for, uh, let's have them look at amending the current policy that you have as an amendment at this time. There could be, there could be some ways of at least exploring those types of options. Um, anyways, this is my old, my old insurance hat on, but I thought, I thought I'd throw that out there for people. No, that's great feedback, Cam. And there was a question someone had also about their mortgage and how mortgage payments and figuring that out as well. And um, to the best of our understanding, certainly the recommendation similar to the one you just made is to contact your mortgage provider, whether that's your bank yeah. or a broker, to um, navigate deferrals, waiving of fees, that kind of thing. Um, am I missing any uh, advice to give about mortgages specifically, Lloyd? So I would say that uh, there people that had approached their banks early in the, in the situation that we're in, um, were getting, you know, we're not ready for you. We're not ready for you, but we are seeing now in the last week that the banks are set up for mortgage programs for charge card deferral programs, uh, the up to $40,000 loan. Uh, there was some confusion last week about uh, $40,000 being the fixed amount for the loan, but it's up to 40,000. So, and, and whatever you take as a loan, 25% is repayable if you repay it by the end of 2022. And I also want to correct myself. I said 750 million to Wellington County. They would love that, but it was actually 750,000 to Wellington County. So just since I'm on the record. He corrected himself. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Better now than later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Thanks for the clarification and the comment. Um, yeah, do contact your uh, banks and brokers for um, the programs that they have set up now and their discretion to be able to support mortgages, loans, um, for that kind of thing. So that's great. Um, we have a question about what kind of guidance we might be able to expect to receive about how employers should reopen offices and workplaces when that's appropriate um, and what kind of guidance they should look to. And I know we touched on that a little bit. Um, I know at the chamber, we certainly plan to hope to bring some folks together to provide <coughs> that feedback. Um, but I'm curious to ask um, all three of you um, if there's any formal um, next steps in mind. Um, I'm sure uh, Mayor Guthrie through the task force, this is a conversation we'll, we'll touch on about how to support business businesses to reopen safely and in an appropriate uh, response based on public health direction. Anything else you could find? Uh, well, we will be taking most of the lead from the province, uh, more than likely. Um, there was, uh, but touching on that sort of topic, I think it's really good now to take a, a, a big breath in because what they're calling um, the next phase is the is going to be the reopening of the economy and it, it actually may be a, a more more of a struggle than actually what we've been going through to date um they're, they're indicating um there's a great globe and mail article I, I i read over the weekend talking about how things are slowly kind of a slow crawl coming out of this and um i think it will really require a lot of <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of grace and a lot of patience as we start to come out of this, because I think just as much as Mike or, or Lloyd or myself are getting questions of, well, can my business be open or can it not? I think that's going to increase um, drastically as we come out of this, uh, where people are going to be like, well, they get to open, but not me and why? And, and so I think, uh, I think we need to collectively get ready for the, the next phase which is the reopening of the economy. But I'll turn to Mike because uh, as I said, most of it would come from the province. Yeah, they're very well said, uh, Cam. And I, actually, I'll, I'll give uh, the Premier credit yesterday. I thought the way he handled this particular question was good, was that we're starting to have the conversations of what a gradual reopening is going to look like, but any reopening will follow public health guidelines and will follow the direction of public health officers. Uh, because as much as I think all of us want to see the economy reopen and, you know, whatever the new normal is going to be, I think we all want to get there as soon as possible. But the one thing that could be even worse than not reopening is reopening too fast and then having to lock down again. Uh, and yeah. so, reopening in a in a way that follows the science follows the evidence and follows uh, public health guidance is going to be uh, essential uh, but i also know this is going to be one of the most controversial 
discussions we're going to be having provincially over the next little while because even the current essential non-essential business list is pretty controversial and i would say probably the questions next to health my office is dealing with the most and so the one thing i'm going to bring to the table uh and is that however we do it in whichever businesses are allowed to gradually start reopening that there be very clear like mandatory physical distancing guidelines that are enforceable because the other thing we want to make sure happens is that there's an even playing field for everyone like even now i see some businesses doing really well with physical distancing work in their businesses and quite frankly some others that aren't doing as well and we and we know there are significant costs associated with that and so you know i want to make sure every business has a level playing field that we're all doing this in a way that um follows public health guidelines and puts from a cost standpoint puts everyone on on an even playing field as much as possible and and um and then in terms of a timeline like i mentioned earlier um those conversations are starting now but i have no at this point no indication whatsoever of the timing of anything uh, uh, and, and so i don't think we're going to know that for a few more weeks uh, i can tell you in the questions i've had with dr williams the chief medical officer of health he said that as we roll out sort of you know a gradual reopening it'll be in two week segments so they're planning everything yeah. in two week segments <laughs> because that's the incubation period so any rollout and any changes in rollout you'll expect in in two week increments that's, um, that's great feedback if Lord. i could if I, I can add i think one of the thing, two of the things that we want to ensure is number one that the employees are safe and that the the employers have the tools to make sure that they are isolating properly and that they are safe as mike was saying the other thing is that we want to make sure that the supply chain into the medical facilities and the care homes uh, isn't interrupted so that if we're opening businesses that need masks which they will uh, that we aren't going to put undue pressure on the areas where healthcare workers are involved and uh, so the, the two-week phase in uh, locally what that could look like is uh, truck plants opening in the states on may 4th and then the supply chain here having to be able to produce parts for the the supply chain for the truck parts as one of the examples that we're going to have to deal with uh, so then how do we ensure that those employees are kept safe and also that they aren't bringing diseases in or the disease in from the community into the facility of, of manufacturing so testing is going to be huge and uh, supply of ppe is going to be another huge piece Great follow-up, Lloyd, and um, it really does sound like it needs to continue to be an and conversation. So how do we safely reopen business and the economy and maintain um, the direction and advice of public health to keep people, individuals, and employees safe and healthy? So we can do both and uh, we just have to be thoughtful about it. And I know we're all thinking about how to do that together. So that's great. I, I've received a few questions that um, are really specific to some folks. So um, again, I, I'll read reiterate to everyone on the webinar that we plan on sharing um, all three of your contact information um, so that people can direct their specific situations and circumstances to you. Um, as an example, um, questions about um, CERB and also receiving other provincial financial support like ODSP or um, Ontario Works and how, how all of that works and, and the impacts of that. Um, Lloyd, is there anything you can say about um, you know, quote unquote clawbacks about what um, it will look like, you know, after this year is over and we it's time for income taxes next year and and, uh, and what folks should be thinking about or mindful of as they may, might collect relief over this period. Um, I've talked to a few people that have received CERB and then had applied to employment insurance and then also received employment insurance under CERB. Um, if you're getting duplicate payments, you will get payments up to eight thousand um, dollars if we go through the four the four payment periods. Uh, you won't get more than eight thousand, so hang on to your extra payments. The two thousand dollars is a taxable income, 
So at the end of the year, there will be a tax implication on that. And uh, you know, just watch out for that as you're, I mean, you need the money because it's an emergency, but uh, between now and the end of uh, this uh, fiscal year, you'll have to make sure that you're putting some away to cover the taxes. And if it's $8,000, you might want to be putting away two or $3,000 to help you at the end of the tax year. But work with your tax planner on that um, to make sure that you're, you're covering yourself off at the end. Thanks, Lloyd. It's a good reminder uh, for folks to continue to use the resources that they normally would access that support, whether it's their financial planning, business planning, um, anything else, because those folks are also being uh, empowered with the information to, to support individuals and businesses through this period. So um, that's good advice. Um, this another one for Lloyd. Um, uh, I know you've spoken to this already, but it's a question about small businesses without employees or owners who pay themselves via dividend versus salary. Can you speak to um, that impact on CERB? Yeah, if you um, go on to the, the um, Canada.ca and look up CERB, there's a Q&A section at the bottom. The last, the last question of, of bullet point really goes into that in good detail. Uh, the, the long and short of it is uh, no income for 14 days and uh, then you qualify for CERB. And uh, whether you draw your income as a dividend provided your, ta your business has paid the tax on the income that you're drawing, um, and you're using the business as a way of, of paying a lower tax rate, that's totally fair and it's legal and uh, would not disqualify you from CERB. But other questions on that, really, you know, my email address or go on Canada.ca and look up CERB and all the details are under the question and answer portion. Perfect. Uh, just a couple more here before we wrap up. Um, Mayor Guthrie, we know that uh, City Council had to make some difficult decisions as it relates to staffing at, at the city. Um, there was a question about, um, I've just lost it in my thread here, um, a question about how different uh, departments are being supported and um, what staffing looks like um, at the city now. Uh, and, and I'm just wondering if you can provide some commentary about that decision and um, what the implications are for uh, city staff and services. <clears throat> just gotta unmute there. Um, so yes, uh, extremely, extremely difficult decisions. Uh, the same as probably many business owners are, are going through right now, they're, where they're having to make some tough decisions in regards to their, their staffing as well. And uh, so there was uh, about two weeks ago, 601 casual part-time um, laid off. And then the, uh, the decision was to have another, um, I think including the library board, about 270 or so employees that uh, needed to be, uh, unfortunately, uh, put on on a leave as well. And so uh, that they're the ones that the staff that are remaining and working in critical spots uh, are are obviously being supported as, as as they're working every day. And those that aren't at this time are still completely being supported. They they have benefits still. They have access to um, any of the benefits uh, if they need uh, any kind of help with stuff through through the city's uh, benefits uh, and uh, our staff have been uh, excellent in, in, in having to deal with this situation which is not something anyone really signs up to deal with and uh, and council has too uh, we are uh, so proud and, and support all of our employees again just like any business owner should uh, and uh, we view them all as kind of family, right? Like, so it's uh, their friends, their family. We're all we're all working together to make our city amazing. And uh, so it's been tough decisions. It will save about a million dollars a month. The overall, the six hundred and one, and the other decisions that have been made. Um, and with uh, with work uh, with sorry with deficits staring uh, us in the face right now as municipalities. Um, uh, not just the deficit part, but also we need people to be working too, right? Like they have to be doing something to, to get that, that, that paycheck. So it's been a tough, tough go, but everyone's being supported uh, and we hope to see everyone back as soon as we can. Great, thank you for that feedback. Um, to Mike, 
Um, again, we've touched on this a bit and there, we know that there is a bit of uncertainty around the essential and non-essential business list and folks still asking questions about clarification. Um, there's a 100 number, I believe that's still available for people to call. So we'll share that again um, as, as a way for folks to ask specific questions. But um, to be clear, if you're deemed non-essential, it's still okay to operate, just simply not have patrons enter a location or property, correct? Yeah, so you look at, and I can get this exact language to you. I, I should have had it ready today anticipating this question, but um, it, it's pretty clear that uh, delivery and curbside pickup are allowed. And, and so... Um, and working from home, obviously. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, you know, I ordered books from a particular business in Guelph the other day and the delivery was two hours later like I was pretty impressed with the service uh, shout out <laughs> member bookshelf for that yes <laughs> so, uh, so businesses are making it work and I know it's hard because even if you are doing curbside pickup and delivery people's revenues are down like like so I know that's not the answer but but you are allowed to do it and and it and and so um, you just need to make sure you do it in a way that follows all the public health guidelines. Okay, great. Thanks, Mike. Well, I want to um, give all of you a minute or two to wrap up. Um, is there any last comments you'd like to make um, to those that are participating? Um, again, we have recorded this session. We'll be making it available, available to all who've participated um, and we'll be sharing your contact information so that folks can give direct examples and, and stories and, and questions to each of you. Uh, but a quick minute for each of you to, to say a final word to the, to the group. We'll start with the, yeah, sure. Um, we can start with Cam. <laughs> oh, you're muted. <laughs> oh, Cam, you're still on mute. Hold on, let's get him unmuted. There we go, okay. Sorry, sorry, my bad. <laughs> We're putting um, charades here. <laughs> um, just, everyone should just know that, uh, and I, I say this kind of outside looking in, I try to have that lens on things sometimes. This community is uh, very blessed to have Mike and Lloyd and people like you, Shakiba, that um, can really uh, handle what's going on right now. So the relationship that we have is tight. We're working together like crazy. Um, we're going to get through this okay. Uh, I know it. We're going to be stronger at the end of it. And uh, so just keep the ideas coming. Keep the questions coming so we can keep everybody in the loop. Uh, but uh, I'm actually really looking forward to the next steps, the next phases that come out of this, because we're we got a good team together. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be really good. So thank you for doing this. I'll mute myself now. <laughs> thank you, Cam. Mike. Yeah, uh, just echo what Cam just said about us all working together. Um, I said this prior to this uh, pandemic, and I'll say it now: is that. I feel lucky to be the MPP for Guelph because I feel like our community pulls together. You know, all Canadians are pulling together, but Guelph, there's something really special about Guelph. And I talked to some other MPPs and um, there isn't the same level of just community spirit here with all of our elected representatives, leaders within the community, businesses within the community, um, social service agencies, people have really rallied. And so I know it's a really tough time, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel and we are gonna come out of this together. Uh, and so thank all of you for that because it really is a community-wide effort. And then I would just say on a couple quick notes, I quickly scrolled through the Q&A. Uh, still a lot of questions about rent. So just reach out, if you could reach out to my office directly. Um, any stories we have or ideas that you have that I can take to the table because the province is still trying to figure this out. And so I will take that to the table and you know, you can guide me in those efforts. And a lot of questions about essential, non-essential businesses and when we can open. And again, um, bring those, bring particularly your specific concerns or ideas uh, to my office. So I can, again, take those to the provincial tables that we're having those conversations. Uh, because I can say I've taken a lot of guidance from people in Guelph and I feel really smart sometimes when I 
talk in some of these provincial wide meetings because it's only because you all have given me great ideas. <laughs> so you all get the credit for it. So keep, keep, keep reaching out. And thank you for the great work you're doing, Shakiba, with the chamber as well. <clears throat> thanks. Thank you, Mike. Lloyd. Yeah, thanks, Shakiba. And, and Mike and Cam, I, I totally echo what you're saying. Uh, it's so good to be on our nightly conference calls with MPs after we've been on a morning conference call with you guys to be able to say what's going on in our community and Shakiba, the, the chamber stepping in and really stepping up to bring our business community together. The Canadian Chamber of Commerce site has the business resilience uh, connection to it. And there's a lot of really good information there for businesses that are looking at how, to, how do they get through this. Uh, and that's being worked on with the Government of Canada as well uh, through the Canadian Chamber of Commerce. You know, the frontline workers, you know, the people that come home every night, um, really putting their families at risk and themselves at risk and what they do to make sure that they, they're washing their hands and washing their clothes and, and keeping, keeping our community safe, but also making sure that we've got health care, we've got food, and we've got essential services. So a great, great uh, response from our community. We just need to keep doing it. Uh, we may be over the curve. We may not. But uh, Cam said this earlier, the worst thing we could do would be to open up too early or in the wrong way and then have to go back to zero. So keep it up, Chamber. Keep it up, Chamber members. We will get through this together. Thank you for that comment. I have to say, I, I reiterate, like to reiterate everything all three of you have said, and I am very grateful on behalf of our members and businesses in our community to thank you for always being so willing to get together um, uh, to have these conversations. You're right, we're lucky in Guelph, the amount of collaboration and cooperation that exists um, stands out in, in our region and, and nationally. So thank you to the three of you for all the work you're doing uh, day in and day out to support everybody in, in Guelph, including the business community. Um, and I'll take a quick moment to uh, mention, like Lloyd did, to please uh, check out the GuelphChamber.com website. The COVID-19 business support tab has a lot of great information, a lot of great links and resources. We have some great deals and discounts being offered by other members to uh, Guelph Chamber members and businesses for services and supports you might be interested in. And, and do be in touch with us as well directly at the Guelph Chamber. So uh, I look forward to have hosting another one of these hopefully in a few weeks uh, with additional updates. Um, but don't hesitate to connect with any of our offices uh, with questions in the meantime. And I hope everyone has a great rest of the day and week. Thanks, everybody. Great. Thanks, Akiba. Bye. Thanks, thanks very much. Bye. Bye.